don't think there's an optimal relationship um, between financial institutions and regulators for addressing complex financial crime. Um, and I think that opinion would likely be echoed across many of those working in that space, regardless of, of, of who they're working for. I think a lot of the challenges that, that I see could potentially be attributed to the fact that there is a compliance paradigm um, as opposed to a more collaborative framework. Um, and that really has two impacts. I think firstly it, it shifts fairly significant focus um, onto complying with financial crime regulation as opposed to trying to identify complex financial crime. Secondly, um, when you consider the nature of complex financial crime itself, um, by design it cuts across multiple borders, um, be they multiple organisations, uh, multiple sectors, products, services, even multiple countries. And to optimally address that, you really require the capability to be as fluid as financial criminals are in cutting across those same borders, and that capability doesn't really exist today. I think you could take a range of different steps to address this, and I think in formulating that solution, I think you could hone in on specific pieces of regulation or legislation. I think you could start to analyze the dynamics of certain relationships, um, delve into the detail of certain processes or, or underlying applications. However, the, the one constant across all of that is data. You know, to, to some extent, usually a, a fairly large extent, data underpins all of the assessments, decisions and actions that are taken in that area. Um, so by focusing on data, by taking a data-first approach to addressing complex financial crime, I think you start to create an environment whereby you can build a, a far more optimal response to complex financial crime and ideally one that's based more on collaboration um, than compliance. When using data to address complex financial crime, financial institutions face the same issues they face when using data for any business process. There are a very wide range of issues, um, but perhaps the most critical one is that of data accessibility. Large financial institutions have huge IT estates where data is widely dispersed across all of the applications and platforms that are necessary to provide financial services. That can make it very difficult to obtain all of the data that is necessary to make an optimal, timely and cost-effective assessment of financial crime. Um, so you know, financial crime is, is certainly no exception. Um, I think you could argue that there are additional challenges in that space due to the focus on you know, a series of fairly fractured processes as part of the overall framework, um, which are typically supported by monolithic applications with little in the way of connectivity. A data-first approach to addressing financial crime is typically going to involve aggregating all of the internal and external data that is available and relevant within a given organisation, and then storing and processing that data so that it becomes as easy as possible to use. Once that, once that sort of data infrastructure programme is underway, I think there's then a, uh, an interesting and compelling conversation to be had around the adoption of cloud, which represents a, a great opportunity to deploy new technologies and, and to do so at scale. Interestingly, the adoption of cloud, I think, also presents uh, an excellent opportunity, given that it's a, a relatively impartial environment, um, to enable kind of much wider collaborative efforts um, and data sharing across borders and across organisations. Um, and that really has the potential to start shifting the existing compliance paradigm into one that's more collaborative um, and hopefully more optimal in addressing complex financial crime. <laughs> <laughs>